Normally, everyone in this room is just a Google search away from answers to anything you can think to ask. But I say only probably because maybe you've lost your phone, right? Although we've almost conquered the vast world of information, we're still limited in our control of the physical world until now. The next step in technological development is to break barriers of physical limitation to human learning and engagement. As Mark Zuckerberg said, virtual reality is the next platform. Compressing an entire physical world and anything past it into a pair of glasses and expanding it in front of our eyes. Today I'll be covering three areas. One, the problem with health and safety in New Zealand that VR solves. Two, how VR works and why it's so effective as a training tool. And three, the big picture with where we could be in this industry in the future. New Zealand has a health and safety problem. In 2013, the Independent Task Force on Workplace Health and Safety reported that our health and safety system was failing. In particular, it stated poor, <coughs> enga poor worker engagement sorry, and poor management of particular at-risk populations as some of the weaknesses within our current system. It was decided that New Zealand needs a seismic shift in attitude towards health and safety, resulting in a significant reform, including a new act in the formation of WorkSafe NZ with the ultimate goal of reducing death and serious harm by 25% by 2020, and further, to be recognised as having one of the best health and safety records in the world. Uh, this table shows how much harsher penalties for non-compliance became, with fines now ranging from $50,000 sorry, $50, to $3 million, and reckless conduct meaning potentially five years in prison. Now, fines of $3 million and potentially five years in prison gets employers' attention, and I tell you what, it fuels demand for solutions. But before we get into those, virtual reality, <laughs> let's look at the main reasons it actually works. How does it give us such a profound experience? Firstly, a stereoscopic display which creates the illusion of depth. This is achieved by showing slightly different images to each eye, which our brains then automatically merge as in real life. We can test how this works by putting our finger out in front, I'm not seeing many fingers, <laughs> and just winking each eye. See how your finger appears to move? That's because that's the different image being shown to you by each eye. Secondly, by providing a field of view as close as possible to the roughly 180 degrees we get in real life. Third, head tracking. Uh, this means that images in the user's vision change as appropriate to the angle they're viewed from. So we're going to go fists up this time, and if you move your head to one side, you're going to see more pinky. If you move it to the other, you're going to see more thumb. And the point this is illustrating is that despite the object remaining constant, when we move, the image changes, and this is important. So VR, virtual reality, needs to emulate this. Uh, the fourth main component is motion tracking. Because when we walk around and say walk forwards, I'm getting closer and things are visually getting bigger. Uh, we can pick out more detail. We move backwards and vice versa. So by replicating these natural human senses, VR tricks our brains into feeling like we really are in that situation. And what more useful situation to give us the benefit of experiencing, but without the disadvantages of actually being in, than ones that are high risk, high cost, and hard to replicate? Virtual reality for training does exactly this. It's efficient both socially and economically. Uh, I'm going to outline these efficiencies, and you'll see that they directly ameliorate problems and achieve specific visions outlined in the Independent Task Force report. So the value of VR lies in putting people in dangerous situations with no real risk. Fulton Hogan uses VR made by NZ company Cerebral Fix to simulate the famously hazardous activity of filling tankers with bitumen. Workers can safely spill virtual bitumen all over their bodies and come out of this exercise with a learning rather than a serious injury. Additionally, it provides an auditable track record of all training, which is invaluable for future improvement and recording our performance. The task force report attributes overrepresentation of Māori and Pacifica in workplace incidents to poor communication and poor literacy skills. When you think about it, virtual reality bypasses this barrier completely. It's fully hands-on, and it's fully intuitive. You don't need to have communication Sorry, you don't need to have literacy skills to use it. It also suits our technologically literate young people better and is thus in line with more effective high-risk population targeting. This is also what makes VR so much more engaging than traditional methods, which I'm sure some people in the room will know more than others. 
Uh, it's even fun, and it's directly stimulating genuine and effective worker participation. It's conducive to worker feedback based on nuances that can only really be learned through experience, and it fosters a bottom-up leadership approach as part of the goal for strong, visible leadership. VR and radiology at ARA Polytechnic removed limitations of overexposure to radiation and increased training time. Environmentally, on this front, it's obvious that virtual fuel, virtual equipment, and virtual explosions are much better for the environment than the real things. As Sir Paul Callahan would put it, VR training is environmentally benign. All of this was making us safer and fulfilling the vision of creating a national culture that is more risk aware. VR training is also economically effective. It eliminates many ongoing costs of maintaining training programs. Take New Zealand charity LifeFlight, for example. These guys pay $4,000 per hour just to operate the helicopters that are at the centre of the service that they provide for, for New Zealanders in need. Training staff requires initial and ongoing flights every single 90 days recurring. Imagine what this cost is and imagine what it could be spent on instead. Further, VR ensures major equipment can stay in use rather than be taken out for training, and it provides flexibility as to where and when safety training takes place, which has massive economic benefits. If you think about it, this room, if we could all chuck on the, the glasses, which are now affordable, this room could be a surgical theatre. So work-related injury and illnesses cost New Zealand around 2% of GDP per year, and other countries an average of 4%. There is a huge demand for this product, and it can be catered to, because this is a highly exportable platform. The nature of VR means we can export software platforms and customised training regimes from New Zealand to the world. So virtual reality is clearly an awesome training tool, and it solves our health and safety problems, but where is the industry going in future, and why can New Zealand in particular lead it? So the global training industry is worth over 300 billion worldwide, and it will only get bigger. Inevitably, public health and safety catastrophes will occur, like the recent uh, London fires and Pike River mine disaster, and what this means is that sanctions for non-compliance will only tighten, like those prison sentences, like those massive fines. This gets employers' attention, and it fuels demand for more safety solutions now. Moore's law will continue to work its magic, and VR equipment will only become more affordable, more realistic. Additionally, health and safety training is really just one application of virtual reality. There are so many more, like virtual reality training for combat, for sports, and for things we haven't imagined yet. New Zealand is already a heavy hitter internationally in the virtual, virtual reality industry, too. We have a number of renowned crews, such as Peter Jackson, uh, who he's working with Apple for AR Apple devices, and 8i, who are pioneering work in volumetric capture. Think Star Trek holograms. Kiwis will and are making it in this upcoming industry because we have the genuine adaptability and of innovation required. So in summary, virtual reality for training, especially health and safety, is a massive opportunity for New Zealand and the world. It can make us safer and benefit our economy whilst having no detrimental impact on the environment. This is something we can export to the world, and the sooner we can take this opportunity, seize it and invest, the more benefits we'll reap. And I can't wait for all this to become our reality. Cheers.